You know what? I had such a great time last night watching The Voice. I gotta start the video the only way I know how. Tell me what, what, what do I do? Yeah. If you saw The Voice last night, you know, you would get that reference. Um, Happy Tuesday, everybody. So let's get to my little high magic kindness. Okay, so... A lot of stuff is going on yesterday, so I couldn't watch The Voice with my parents. Yeah, here's the thing. I'm, yes. If you couldn't tell, like, part of this video is legitimately going to be me talking about The Voice. Um, but I did see The Voice last night, and here's the thing. We actually got to go to El... We got... We, I just get right. But last night we went to dinner. We went to El Room. I could have posted that I went to El Room last night, but here's the thing. I'm actually working on my Zimmerman list. Basically, um, uh, yeah, I'll talk about it. I'll talk about my Zimmerman list in a minute. And my act of kindness was. What was my act of kindness? I mean, I did hold the door for a few people. Oh, you know what? Here's the thing. We were pressed for time when it came to going to our room, so I was the one who called ahead and told them we were going to eat there. So that, that was my kind. So, what's my Zimmerman list? Well, I may know see that one of my heroes is Andrew Zimmerman. And like, the other day, he met, he like, post, he did a post about like some sort of, or video about like a contest he's doing where um, you like take photos of like a restaurant and like some of the food it has. And, um, and uh, you put that, put hashtag my Zimmerman list when you put it on social media. And the lucky winner gets to have dinner with Andrew Zimmerman. Now, listen, I know for a fact I'm never going to win a contest like this. However, it does give me an idea of why don't I come up with my own Zimmerman list and just make an album out of it. Why not? So far, I've got Sorges and I've got Elbow Room. So, I've got quite a few more places to do. I have to try and get all the places at Cuca Lake. You know what? I'm telling you, 2023, this, 2023 is going to be the year I finally go to all 13 places in Cuca Lake in the span of one summer. I can do it. You just gotta, you gotta plan accordingly, you know? Um, I gotta get though, I gotta get all 13 places, so that's, 15 all together so far. 16 if you include Libs, obviously. Um, Anilio's. And Atlas. I should probably get them. Three Birds in the Cellar. I got a lot of them to do. But, uh, again, this is an album that's going to take a really long time for me to get. But, I'm working on it. Uh, so, again, I know for a fact I'm not winning this contest. No way. But, you know, it's fun to do. It actually kind of reminds me when I was first coming up with my full course menu of life. Because, like, huh, that's actually, because I'm watching Torico years ago, and like, hmm, a full course menu of life. That's interesting. Could I come up with one of my own? It's like literally the same thing. So, it's awesome. Now, I have to talk about the voice. So, <laughs> for those who are diehard fans of the voice, it's no secret that this will be Blake Sheldon's last season being a coach on the voice. This is actually momentous in a lot of ways because Blake Sheldon is the final member of the old guard who's still there. Oh yeah, I remember when the very first commercial for The Voice aired during the Super Bowl. Yes, the very first commercial was a voice for the the very first commercial for The Voice was a Super Bowl commercial, and I'll never forget it. It was Blake Sheldon, Adam Levine, Steel Green, and Christina Aguilera, and like they're all they all hear a voice in the distance, right? 
and they're like fighting each other, doing kung fu moves. They get to where the actual voice is. They completely destroy the wall. Not the, not the door, like the wall and the door, like the entire thing. And it's a Super Bowl commercial. It has to be funny. And it turns out it was the late, great Betty White. May God rest her soul. That being said, Betty White on that original voice commercial and Betty White in the Snickers commercial, both of which are Super Bowl commercials, by the way, are two of the best commercials she's ever been in. Hands down. Although, wow, I'm totally, this is how long ago this commercial aired. When they remade the commercial, they replaced Betty White with Bruce Jenner. Yes, this is back when he, this was back when it was Bruce Jenner. That's how long ago it was. So, the voice pretty much has gained pop, gained popularity almost instantly. I mean, people from all over the country, possibly the world, get to do like a blind audition for these coaches to only hear, and if they like the voice, they turn around and they want to coach him. That's actually a really, that was a brilliant concept at the time. A concept that clearly still works. It is entertaining. It is nice to see like, you know, these, but keep in mind, this is reality television. And anyone will tell you that one of the main things about reality TV is even, even, be, even though it does mean reality TV, you need to come up with a character for yourself that people have to root for and follow. So yeah, it does follow some of the rea reality TV tropes, but at the end of the day, you get to hear some talented people sing really good music. And like it or not, music is one of the, one of the things that has been guaranteed since the very beginning to bring people together, like food, religion, music, um, I'm sure there's other things too, but those are easily the big three. And it started with, again, Christina Aguilera, Blake Sheldon, Adam Levine, and Seal Green. And as the years went by, one by one, they all went on to do different things. We had different judges like Pharrell Williams, Alicia Keys, Gwen Stefani, Miley Cyrus, um, John Legend, like the list goes on and on. For, oh, Camila Cabello, who was just on the, the previous season. So, there have been a lot of people going in and out. But the one person for the last 22 seasons that remained was Blake Shelton. He was always there. And it's a test of how good of a coach he is because how many times has Blake won? Like nine, I think? I know for fact he's won at least six. We'll say somewhere in between six and nine. How about that? If it's more, then I got prices right what was going for me. So there you go. Um, and yeah, Kelly Clarkson. I mean... Let's be real here. One of the highlights of last night was the fact that Blake Shelton and Kelly Clarkson have great, you know, banner between each other. To be sure. And, of course, Blake was doing the whole, this is my last season out on the boys. And, he's doing this. Because so I can do it too. Although, um, before I continue on, I have to say, to Chance the Rapper and Niall, Nor Niall Horan, welcome to judging, welcome to being coaches on The Voice. You guys have done really well for yourselves. I love the dynamic that Niall and Blake have, where they're basically father and son. To the point where Niall's like, thanks dad, that's great. I love that. And it's even funnier because Niall actually made the connection like, you know, the folk music that you hear, you know, in Irish music and stuff, isn't really that different from, from country. I mean, here's the thing. If it's a clever ploy to 
to groom Niall to be the next Blake Sheldon. I'll admit, for me, it's working. It's totally working. I find it funny. I find it really clever. And after Blake is gone and Niall comes back, maybe he got something. You know? Although Niall did say, unless NBC decides to give you more money for you to stay. Like that, that's, that's a given. <laughs> so that was really funny. And I mentioned you hear a lot of talented people saying really good music. Last night was no different. For me, I think my, I mean, there, I mean everybody was great, but like, hands down, my favorite group were, um, those three sisters. I think Cinderella, I think they were called. I'm sorry, I, I can look, but they were like three sisters. And they did a good old fashioned boy from Queen, which, okay, you're singing Queen, very nice. And then um, Chance got them to do this one song from The Wiz, where it's like, tell me what, what, what do I do? And, they all, and all three of them harmonized brilliantly. Something is to say that was Chance's first, uh, that was Chance's first, um, win, you know, getting, you know, a contestant. I think that was incredible. I think it was like one of the, one of the coolest things ever. And last night was just full of comedic moments. Like, Niall turning everyone's chair around. Chance, like, stomping on everyone's name, turning their name into his. The banner between Kelly and Blake will always be funny. And all the while I'm thinking, wow, they really are selling this whole Blake's being his last season on The Voice. And I can't help but feel kind of sad about that. I mean, no, I don't have the fondness for The Voice that I have for other shows like AGT or The Masked Singer. But there's an inherent charm to the voice, especially when they're doing the auditions, that I can appreciate. So, man, when this season ends, I'm sure a lot of fans of the voice are going to stop, take a deep breath, and sigh. Especially for those who are either Blake Shelton fans or fans of The Voice who've been watching from the very beginning. Because, I mean, with Blake gone, that will be the end of the old guard. And it'll beg the question, who's gonna come back? I mean, again, they're kinda of trying to groom Niall to be the next Blake Sheldon. I get that. There's definitely something about Niall that is very likable. And Blake asked, no, you're not going to be Blake Shelton, but you could probably approximate what he does. Absolutely. But who else will come back afterwards? I mean, listen, Kelly Clarkson loves doing this. She'll be back. To be sure. And Chance has been proved, Chance actually proved he loves doing this too. I mean... For Blake Sheldon's last season on The Voice, you probably have four of the best possible options to be your judges and coaches. I think it's great. So, I'm not entirely sure if I'll be, I mean, here's the thing, they're gonna do another hour's worth of auditions tonight. So I'll be, I'll easily be able to tell you you know, for sure I'll definitely do this sort of thing, talking about the voice, for the auditions. For sure. I mean, let's be honest, anyone will tell you the auditions are the best part of the voice. At least they're the most entertaining for me. After which, it's up in the air. But, whether I do that or not, I'm definitely going to be paying attention. I'll definitely watch. Because... I know it was only one episode, it was two hours long, but it's only one episode, so it's not really the greatest sample size, but I'm really digging what I see so far.
Speaking of things that I dig what, watching, and since I mentioned Elbow Room, let's see who this week's guest of hot, hot one. Uh, let Let's see who the seventh guest, uh, who the seventh hot ones guest of 2023 is. Okay, before I before I look this up, I have one more thing to say about that. Like, as I was getting ready to do this video, I'm like, the seventh hot ones guest of 2023. Who is it going to be? I'm like. I'm only going to be able to use that rhyme for the entirety of this year. Once we get to 2024, I can't do that anymore. Okay, let's see. Um, if I can... I got the notifications. Oh, very nice. Uh, I'm going to go fast. Okay, let's see, uh, sorry, I'm reading some notifications. And the seventh Hot Ones guest of 2023 is, ooh, we got Pedro Pascal. Cool. Okay, um, here's the thing. My experience with Pedro Pascal isn't really the greatest. I mean, I know because he's on the Last of Us, which I haven't watched yet, is for sure why he's on Hot Ones this week, because he's going to promote it. But, he's most also known for being Oberyn Martell in Game of Thrones. But he's also Narcos, title character in The Mandalorian, and again, The Book of Boba Fett. Plays Joel in the last of us, obviously. My first introduction to Pedro Pascal was um, watching Kingsman the Golden Circle, which I don't care what anyone says. Kingsman the Golden Circle was fun. Like, what was the score on Rotten Tomatoes? I know it wasn't that bad of a score, it was like. 51, okay. So, yeah, 51 is considered rotten. But, okay, you know what? I know what the next movies is going to be. I'll get to that later, though. But, yeah, Pedro Pascal and Hot Ones. Super exciting. Okay, I better uh, sign off and get out with my day. I hope you liked this video. If you did like and subscribe to the YouTube channel, follow me on social media. As always, I am very humble to this video. For all of you guys who watch the Jordan name, hopefully you have a wonderful, 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 um, I forgot the day of the week. <laughs> a wonderful Tuesday. And remember, if any of you guys want to talk or chat, I'm always going to be here to let you know. Always hear back. Take care and make good choices. 607 all day, baby.